Hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Alfred Chambry and uh, today we're gonna show you how to this piece of O1 we're gonna turn it into a 3.2 which would be this. Uh, there's various ways how you can grind it and shape it. I'm gonna show you two or three different ways today and uh, I'll show you also some uh, aids and jigs what you can use to make this. Uh, this material is O1 which is oil hardened. I like to use it because uh, it, it's very forgiving. It's, it's a high speed. Uh, I personally don't like to use uh, water hardened. The reason is uh, uh, you get it a bit too hot, you quench it in cold water, you have a chance of fracturing it. So this has been working for me and I recommend it. Uh, this material is a quarter of an inch diameter. You can also go with a 3 8 diameter. Um, I, my preference is the quarter inch. I like it better than the 3 8 You can get uh, more, you know, closer, uh, deeper without making a wide groove. So uh, uh, without further ado, let's go and uh, show you how to grind this. There are, you know, different jigs. There is this one you can use. Uh, that's got three faces, 120 degrees each. And there is also another one. You can get two nuts and you can just, you know, hot glue them to the rod. As long as the faces of the hex are on the same plane, you're okay. You just put this on the platform and rotate it. I'll show you how to do that too. Um, so uh, let's go to the grinder and, and I'll show you how to do all this. Okay, um, now that we have shown you what the uh, three point tool is, we're gonna show you how to actually shape it on the grinder and uh, some of the settings that we use to do this. And uh, I normally, if we're gonna do it on a platform, I normally set my platform around uh, 50 degrees or thereabouts uh, from the horizontal. So in other words, this angle here from the horizontal down, it's around 50 degrees. And that's just a ballpark. It depends on how much you, long you want your flute or short or long. You can adjust that as you go along. And uh, so uh, there are various jigs that we have. Uh, one of the jigs is this one. And uh, all this is is two hex nuts and uh, they're just hot glued here on, on the rod. And uh, they're hot glued so that they're on the same plane where on, when it sits on the platform here, they're flat. So basically what you do is you start grinding like this and the object of the grind is to grind the flat and you get close to the middle. And uh, you don't have to do it all in one shot. You do a bit of grinding there, turn two faces, so you have turned 120 degrees, you do the other one, continue, turn two more faces, and do another one. And you keep doing this until all the three faces come to a point. So when you look at it here, you're seeing a point, like what we have here, okay? And those are the three faces you can get, okay? Uh, so that is one, one method. Uh, it's okay. Um, I really don't prefer it. Um, I prefer a different one, which is this. Uh, all this is is a piece of uh, two by four. And uh, I just cut, you know, 120 degrees, three faces, put a, a, a press fit hole in there so the, uh, it, it won't slide, you know, easily. And what you do is you put this like that. This is already ground, so what you do is you start grinding. Okay, when you get close, you turn it, you grind the other face, turn it, you grind the other face. And you keep doing the same procedure until all faces come to a point here. Something <coughs> like that. Now you can adjust how long these faces are gonna be by tilting this up or down. Uh, 
I do not recommend that you make these too long because there is no, really there is no uh, reason to make them long. You're just wasting your material and you're going to make it too pointy and uh, it's not going to work for you. So uh, basically that's it for the time being. Now we'll, we'll, we'll show you how to do the actual physical uh, shaping and grinding of this. Okay. Okay, now uh, we're actually going to do the physical shaping and grinding of this tool. And uh, I'm going to use this fixture. I really like this fixture. Uh, it's, it's very, very user friendly and uh, it's uh, very safe to use too. So uh, the projection here is about inch and a half. It doesn't really matter, uh, you know, close is good. And uh, turn the grinder on, let it come up to speed. And uh, I put my finger underneath like this and then hold it like that. And basically that's all you need. And then you're just gonna go straight across and I try not to put too much pressure on it. I don't want it to get too hot. I don't want to anneal the material. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get one face. I don't have to go all the way to the edge, turn it to the next position, and do the same. Use the whole face of the uh, wheel so that you don't uh, big a rut in there. And this should work out good. Go to the next phase. Next phase. Next phase. Okay, we're getting closer and uh, if you notice, uh, I'm not putting any pressure on it, that way the material is not getting hot. And I'm also keeping an eye on the lengths here so as to get them all the same lengths. There you go. It's all uh, sharpened and ground and all the faces are the same and they all meet in the, in the center and that's what we call a 3.2. Uh, it's very easy to grind. Uh, I will show you now that once you put it into a handle uh, how to uh, sharpen it very very easy using the Wolverine jet. Okay. Uh, now that we have turned it, actually turned, uh, uh, ground that, and you put it in a handle like this. Uh, one recommendation I have for the handle is don't make a big handle uh, because it's a small tool, you won't be able to feel it a lot. Uh, so anyway, once you get into this, you put it into a handle. I'm going to show you how to maintain those three edges uh, very, very easy. And uh, for that, we actually use the Wolverine jig, which is here and just put it in the V, the V uh, adapt piece here that we have. And what we want is we want one of these faces to be touching the wheel all the way. And once you're there, lock it, you're ready to go, okay? So, what you're gonna do is, uh, you're gonna touch that face very lightly, you're gonna turn it, to the next face, which will make one of the faces edge right, looking right at you. Maintain it, turn it around, sharpen, turn it around, sharpen. Basically, that's all you need. You have uh, a 3.2 ready to go and uh, sharpen. Very, very simple. Uh, if you have a different angle on yours, just adjust the foot here in and out 
to accommodate that angle. Good luck. Okay, now that we have uh, actually shaped and ground the tool and put it in a handle like this, we're ready to do some work. What do you use this tool for? And uh, that's what we're going to show you now. Next, uh, we're going to show you uh, some of the things that you can do with it, and you'll be surprised how handy this tool is. Okay, so that's where we're going to go next. Go. Okay. Um, now that we got the tool all done and finished, ground and sharpened, and uh, you know, we're ready to uh, uh, show how to use this tool. There is a lot of applications and uh, that you can use this tool for. Uh, some of them I had, you know, I was playing around with it here. Uh, you can do beads with it. Uh, you can uh, uh, do also if you have a tenon and you want to actually get close and, and refine the tenon, it's very easy to use this tool and do that with. Uh, however, what this tool excels in is if you want to get, you know, uh, really close, if you want to do a couple of beads that are really small, you can actually shape with it because this is a sheer scraper. Uh, it's actually, if you look at it carefully, it looks like a negative sheer scraper. So. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, just gonna do a couple of beads, and you can see how fine of a line you can do with it. Or, or deep, you wanna go deep, you can go deep. You wanna go light, you can go light. Okay. So now, if I wanna uh, shape that bead, I just drop my handle and roll. Drop and roll, and you actually going around the bead and forming it. And by looking up here, you can actually see the shape of your bead happening. And that's it. That's how easy it is to use this tool to make a bead. And if you can maybe zoom a bit on that, you can actually see there is no tear out because this is sheer scraping all the time as you're going around. You're not scraping, it's not level. Even if you hold it level like that, because it's a negative rake, the angle is on an angle, is, is down below horizontal, you're shearing. So you start there and as you roll around, you're shearing all the time and you get such a nice finish. Um, you can also use it if you want to, uh, if you have a bead like this and you want to, you know, you can make a really defined line between different beads. Like these two beads we just did, if I want to define it, I just go deeper right in the middle and it makes that bead pop. There you go. Really a nice, simple, simple tool to use. It has a lot, a lot of applications. Uh, also, here I have a, a, like this face here, I can actually shape it with it. If you look at the angle, it's not horizontal. Even by holding the tool ver uh, horizontal, the cutting edge is on an angle, so it's sheer scraping. Okay, and then I can come here and also form for my tenon. Really, really uh, very user-friendly tool for doing that. Uh, there's other applications you can use this for. If you're using uh, uh, a knurling tool, okay, you can uh, do your knurling and then use that tool to define your, your, your knurling, what you're gonna use. See that or no? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, another use of this tool is if you have a, a, a knurling or you're using the elf tool and you want to highlight and isolate it from the rest of the pattern, this is perfect for doing that because you can go in 
And then if you want to make a wider groove, you can. One way. Wider groove the other way. Really easy. You can also make a bead right by there. And that will highlight and, you know, your decoration you just did. So that's another use for this. Uh, I can show you another one, which will be uh, wire burning. Uh, another use for this tool is, is wire burning. And uh, when you wire burning, you need a place for the wire to sit. So because uh, this small one has a fine point, you can just locate it like that. Always move the rest out of the way. Now, this is uh, uh, what we use for wire burning. It's a piece of uh, wire, you know, high strength wire. Uh, some people use um, music wire. Uh, you can also use a piece of formica if you want to. Uh, whatever you do using wire burning, please do not wrap these around your fingers. That's why you have knobs. You just hold it like that and let it do the work. And what you do is Basically, you hold it like that, get it in the groove, press down, and with the heat, there you go. We'll do another one. It's as simple as that. And that's how you do wire burning. And then you get a piece of uh, 400 sandpaper, clean the burn marks out. Set. That's another way, another use for that too. Um, 